Hello, everyone, and welcome to API Days London online, but that's okay. We're dealing with banking. We're dealing with the energy of London. Um, hopefully, you have a lot of energy right now. Uh, we may or may not be having rain right now. It looks like, well, Alexa told us it wasn't going to rain. It looks like it's going to rain today. So I'm really happy to join you. I'm Jennifer Riggins. I am a tech storyteller. So I work where culture and tech collide or work together. We'll decide. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I, for those that are just listening, I'm a redhead with glasses, redhead with air quotes. Um, and I'm really excited about this first talk with Alexei. Alexei is the head of APIs at Adyen, and he's talking about the culture and technology of where these things come together. And I think that's a crucial part of this API design track. So I'll let you take it away. Make sure you add your questions, comments, everything. We'll get to them at the end. Thank you all so much and enjoy. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, everyone. I am super excited to be here today and starting the discussions on API design at API Days London. So give me a second. And um, Jennifer, can you confirm that you can see my slide? Yes, I can. It looks great. All right. So let's kick it off. Uh, so my name is Alexei. I work for ADN for almost five years, and today I will share some insights on how we do API governance and design. It might be useful for somebody in a similar position or focusing on similar efforts, uh, as well as for all the developers who work on creating public-facing APIs. Uh, first of all, let me quickly introduce myself. I started my career in software engineering, then switched to technical communication, had experience working in startups and scale-ups, and now responsible for API strategy, API governance, API design, and everything else that leads to great developer experience. If you want to find me, you can always uh, check uh, my LinkedIn or Twitter, or maybe find me um, through API days. Besides software engineering, I was studying linguistics, and so my background helps me find some interesting angles in how we look at uh, and design APIs as well. So we all know what API stands for. It's application programming interface. And this is the interface part, which is often overlooked while interface enables interaction. So basically, I see every API as a formal language that we expect our programs to use to talk to each other. But ironically, at the same time, there are always people behind these machines, behind these programs. The culture of human beings meet each other. And that's why it's so important for API design. Today, we'll be looking at the Adyen use case. So let me just quickly introduce what we do. Adyen is a global fintech company, uh, does payment processing and provides other financial services all over the world. So we support more than 200 different payment methods and we are operating globally. We've observed and still observing fantastic growth of our platform. And even in these challenging times, our platform is able to scale up and support businesses all over the world to overcome the COVID crisis. We are serving an enormous number of companies from completely different industries with very different challenges and expectations. And here are just some examples of fantastic brands that process payments with Adyen, both Ecom Mobile and Point of Sale. As you can easily imagine, API is a bread and butter of our business. We are a single platform, and this is our conscious choice. APIs make all parts of our system interconnected, both internally and externally. So to better understand how a platform and its APIs look like, let's explore some numbers. Um, first of all, we have dozens of public APIs. And you can imagine that internally, we have thousands of different services and APIs. Uh, supplying these public APIs. We provide our APIs for different platforms, so for web, for mobile, for terminals, and for maybe some other devices that you can imagine applicable in the payments industry. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands API calls per minute, and this is just a general number, but on the peak times, we have much more. So it's quite an intensive uh, platform operation. We have private cloud distributed across uh, different regions globally across the globe. 
And if you can imagine some numbers in 2020, we processed more than uh, 300 uh, billion of euros, and we are still uh, experiencing exponential growth. And we should be highly available 24 seven. So basically, of course, this all means that there are a lot of challenges on the platform related to the technology choice that we have, to upgrading the technology. Of course, security is very important in general in the, in the payments industry, scalability, availability, and a lot of other things. Why this is all important? So you can see that managing such a platform and APIs on such a platform can be quite complicated. Uh, so first of all, as I mentioned, payments never sleep. And especially if you're operating globally, your platform should be highly available 24-7. Another reason for this co complexity is that we exist from 2006 and there are a lot of existing customers and history of decisions and a lot of integration that we always need to keep in mind. It's just not, not something that you start from the beginning right now. Uh, you really need to make sure that you're not breaking all the legacy that you have. But uh, you should also look at this positively because this is uh, uh, what made your platform so successful. And this is just more responsibility to maintain and evolve in a proper way. And another challenge is here, which is quite typical for many organizations nowadays, is that we have uh, designed our development organization uh, with a lot of autonomous teams that really own their products in different parts of our business. And uh, these teams um, have people from uh, different disciplines working together on different parts. But this means that they also used to have a lot of freedom in how they um, design, deploy, and deliver APIs to the market, uh, which is great, but also it's a challenge. So to summarize, as you can imagine, API management and API governance in these circumstances is a real challenge. Another interesting point that comes to our mind that uh, ideally you, you just want to control everything in one place, right? Uh, with such a big platform, such a big responsibility, with a single handle controlling all your APIs. However, as we know from, for example, this example from Gartner and from our experience in general, doing so can quickly become a bottleneck. And this is definitely not something that you want to do if you want your teams to move fast. So having all this in mind, the key concept that we learned throughout this way is here on the screen. Any decision is never purely technical or non-technical. There are always a hybrid of balls. So what does it mean? First of all, it's uh, about embedding API design processes, standards, and sharing knowledge across the company, and how this can clash with the existing development culture that you have in your organization. Um, what is uh, the culture in this case? So basically, culture is how we do things here. So this is how we create new products, how we write, test, and deploy our code what we use and when. A lot of things and processes are already engraved in the organization, into people, into your colleagues. So you cannot just come with a new process and say, okay, now we just start uh, with designing API in the beginning and um, everything uh, should be done in that way. Of course, the challenge can be different in different organizations. Um, we've been quite lucky at Adyen because we already have some reflection of our culture in our Adyen way of engineering. So we have some principles uh, and key ideas that every development team is following. And uh, of course, this is not something set in stone, something that we evolve, but also something that we always keep in mind when we're designing our platforms. And this is also related to public APIs. When we looked at these principles, we clicked uh, identified when it might be complicated when we come up with new processes and rules about API design, and especially um, with uh, these two principles highlighted in green right now. So first of all, uh, we expect teams and developers to be autonomous, which means a great level of ownership, both in designing solutions and implementing them. And you see that here we have, we are all designers, architects, coders, and operation engineers, which means that every member of the team should go the extra mile and uh, make decisions about API design as well. But then the challenge is that not everybody has knowledge about API design or about public consideration that we made for our public APIs. And also every team is really owning this part of the API. So we all know that 
API design decisions are complex and impactful. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, they require diverse knowledge from different people. So basically, when we're designing new API, we say, okay, this is a business requirement, this is a business terminology. So this means that we, in these discussions, we need people representing the product side or be knowledge experts in payments or in banking or in other parts of the industries. At the same time, there are very specific questions related to the tech. How do we implement in this case, like REST will be in a proper way. What are the consequences for our platform? What are the architectural decisions? So these decisions really require diverse knowledge. At the same time, the challenge here that we cannot spend weeks in designing API. So usually we really want to be first to the market. We really want to move fast. So this means that there is also time pressure. So imagine you have multiple people you want to get in the room. And um, nowadays also with all the Zoom calls, you, you want to have all the one call, but then you really need them like today or tomorrow. And then another uh, interesting point here is the definition of DAM. So basically what we also learned that for all the public APIs that we um, uh, develop and put online, basically uh, they're done when they're used in production by somebody. So this also means that, of course, uh, you can come up with some quick decision and then uh, think, OK, actually, we need to evolve something and create a new, better version of your API. But at the same time, this previous version that you designed and already put in public usage, it is already used by somebody. And probably this somebody will never be able, or like in the foreseeable future, to migrate to a better version of your API. So basically, this means that this is quite impactful. So um, having all this in mind, we found some good solutions which worked in our case, and I, I hope can also help you if you're in a similar situation like this. So basically, um, how to successfully launch API design gov and governance in an existing organization. First of all, uh, we started with a group of people who are willing to dedicate their time to doing API reviews and uh, also to spend time on API governance efforts. Ideally, you should be looking for a diverse group of people representing different parts of your platform, of your business, of your technology. So, and uh, this group in our case, which we call the API review group or API board, uh, can be responsible for three different areas. API design, where you do API ideation and feedback before the development. Then API reviews, when you evaluate the use of existing APIs and come up with API improvements. And then this group should be responsible for maintaining the style guide and different tooling that help you design the API, but also uh, to like, uh, do other things related to the style guide. Um, this is a slogan that we have an API review group, which is important to stress out. We are here to help, not to control. So we are not API police in this case. And this is important because uh, you will work with different teams with like maybe dozens or maybe even more. And this means that all the people, all the developers should be empowered and should come to you for a question or an, for an answer or to get an advice. So you shouldn't be chasing after them. You shouldn't be controlling them. And only in this way, it will work well. Another point that I mentioned before that you really need to have a lot of people discussing the API design. And in this case, it's important that you all look at the same source of truth, which means that um, looking at the source code, maybe it's not sometimes that easy, especially if you want to involve people from um, different parts of the business home, maybe not have even access to the source code. So it's important that for your API design, you use some visual tool. And we found tooling like Stoplight to be addressing uh, this pretty well, because in Stoplight, you can have the design of your API, which is still stored in open API format, which is quite standard. And multiple people can look at the same API design and have a meaningful discussion and also create new branches with their proposals and so on and so forth. So we include different people to sharpen our ideas. And if you're thinking about API design in your organization, I definitely recommend you to look for different tooling like Stoplight, maybe Postman, maybe Swagger Hub. There are plenty of them on the market. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this group will be making a lot of decisions. So it's important that you write down all the decisions, formalize them, and also keep in a place 
where it can be easily accessible to everyone in the organization. It's also important that everyone in the organization can easily contribute to that. So then ideally you can put it in a, I don't know, Git repository or maybe in some wiki page or somewhere else. And also we found that it's important not only explain what you do with your API when you design it, but also to explain why, which is uh, quite complicated and um, takes some time and uh, uh, effort. Uh, and in addition to your style guide, you can also introduce something like uh, architecture decision records. This format is also now quite well known in the industry and can help you with having a very good source of knowledge for your organization. Another important point is that you need to constantly maintain and evolve your style guide. So this is not something that can be just done and, and that's it. Because uh, every day you have new knowledge, you have new discussions, and this will give you new ideas how your API design should evolve. Of course, having a style guide is important, but of, as you can imagine, we can have hundreds and hundreds of different rules. Nobody's going to remember all of them. And probably for people who are not very familiar with your API design in your organization and all the rules, um, it's also important to have some handy tooling that can help them avoid especially simple mistakes. So there are tools like uh, Spectra, for example, that can help you to do the basic style guide check, uh, do the linting of your API contracts. And so uh, we are using some of them, uh, which can be also uh, like uh, embedded in your, for example, continuous integration process. When developers write their code, they try to commit and they already say, okay, this is actually violating the style guide, or this is a warning, and this is maybe one more reason for me to double check if I'm doing the right thing. So the more you invest in, in this tooling, uh, the better will be the quality of your initial API design and the more fruitful API design uh, discussions you have because you will not focus on camel case versus Pascal case. You will not focus on, I don't know, having tax array. You will focus on uh, really the high level design and what it means for your API consumers. Uh, all this tooling works pretty well as we learned with open API format, uh, I briefly mentioned already uh, this before. Open API is standard now. Um, in my opinion, uh, as I see, becomes a de facto standard for uh, uh, describing and designing any web APIs. Of course, there are other immersion standards depending also on what technology you're using, but open API uh, is definitely very helpful in this case. And here I, I only can give recommendation to use to always use the latest version of open API format because it's evolving greatly and recently we, we saw the release of OpenAPI 3.1, which uh, is now fully compatible with JSON schema, uh, which is tremendous improvements uh, over the previous iterations. So if you have all your files in OpenAPI format, this will mean that you can easily store them, I don't know, in a shared place like a Git repository. You can use all the tooling that supports OpenAPI, which is like Stoplight that I mentioned before, and Spectral, and Postman, and Swagger Hub, and many, many, many others. Uh, and you can import them in Postman collection. So you can do a lot. And it's important that you look at these OpenAPI files as API contracts. So it's not only for documentation, it's not only for making visual design, it's also something that you treat as a contract between different parties, between you and your API consumers, between different teams, which means that you can do contract testing, see if something's changed and it's violating the contract and it maybe needs a new version of your API. And also this can help you introduce the design first approach. When you first design an API, you have an API contract. And after that, uh, your development should follow the steps. Uh, last but not least, uh, basically with all this uh, API design efforts, you can always come up with a great API. But as I mentioned before, there will be always some need uh, to change something. And this means that you need to invest into proper evolution and version strategy. Of course, there are multiple version strategies for web APIs at the moment. And what's important here that it's clear to everybody. And by everybody, I mean everybody internally in the organization and also for the API consumers, for the users of your API, because uh, then everybody understands what to expect when there is a new version coming, what's a breaking change, what's not a breaking change, how to effectively program the integration against your API. And uh, last but not least, um, yeah, this has all uh, helped you to 
integrate API design uh, into your culture and have um, like a good process in uh, creating and uh, helping everybody in your organization. But then uh, it's also important to not to underestimate the value of good tooling uh, because eventually people will follow what easy and what works for them. So um, you must invest your time in making it easier for people. This is not something new. If you are still not convinced, there are a few more people that I found recently uh, was uh, talking actually the same. So make the right thing to do the easiest thing to do. Uh, energy is precious and the human brain is just wired to do like conserve whenever it's possible. And usually we spend far more time doing what's easy than doing what's right. What do I mean for that? Even if you come up with a brilliant API design, you still need to understand what your development teams are using to create this API. And if, for example, they're using certain frameworks or there are certain architecture decisions or certain roadblocks, this will tend them to make the API in a certain way. Basically, you always need to look at the end-to-end -end API life cycle in your organization to understand, okay, this is actually the bottleneck and you should be probably investing some time and making sure that if somebody is using this framework, there is the right piece of documentation or maybe right sample code that helps them to create an API in, in the right way following this now guide. Okay, so basically to summarize three pillars of uh, good API uh, design uh, integration into your organization, API design where collaboration is the key, Mm -hmm. um, API development, as I mentioned, will evaluate the entire API uh, lifecycle, automate as much as possible, and remove bottlenecks. And always think about your API consumers. Always be in between your organization and people who are using your API. Here you can get feedback from different teams, uh, input these teams into your API design discussions, um, maybe build your developer advocacy team, uh, where you can constantly be in the loop of feedback. And uh, to finish today, uh, I want to show this nice image of Matryoshka dolls, which uh, really resonates with me because API governance is a journey and you never know what's next. So basically you see one challenge, open it, and then you see another, and then open it again and open it again until you come to the solution. So basically I wish uh, you good luck in this journey. And if you want to share your experience or talk more about this, please contact me at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alexei. Uh, as Mark was talking in his keynote about the current state of embedded finance, I really enjoyed the idea of an embedded, embedded culture around all of this. And I'm a big docs fan and a writer, so I love a style guide. But can you just briefly talk about if you've had any conflicts around your API design standards or processes and how do you deal with that if you're doing a much more egalitarian, cross-functional team where these are these are suggestions, not demands. How do you deal with a struggle? Yes, uh, it's a great question. And you're absolutely right. Because especially with this size of organization, there are multiple teams doing things in different way. And also there are multiple different APIs. For example, there might be some internal APIs that are following even in our architectural style. And then they need to transform the data basically to process with external API. And Quite often, this is the same developers doing both. So basically, it's hard for them to switch their mindset. So uh, this basically means that it's a lot about discussion. It's a lot about having a compromise and just inviting people to the table all together and uh, look at the problem all together and uh, basically making the right thing. This means maybe having multiple style guides for internal and public APIs. Or this might mean that, OK, this is what we want now, but we want to go there. And then the question, how do we go there? Uh, let's make a plan. Let's change your design right now. That's great. Yeah. And I think um, something you mentioned about the style guide of adding the decision-making process and the reasoning behind creates this history that's like super important to understand why people made these decisions. So I think that's great. Thank you so much, Alexei. If you have any other questions, uh, please put them in the chat. And I'm sure Alexei will go through right now and continue the conversation. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you for having me today.